Welcome. Please tell me uh, your name and why are you here? Hi, I'm Wouter, Wouter Sluis, and I'm here uh, presenting about the Play Fit project. And, and what's that? What's that? The Play Fit project. It's actually an, uh, a very great project. It's uh, close to its end, so we've got great results that we presented here. Um, the results are about changing uh, behavior of students in vocational education. Um, we see that we have, as a society, a health problem in uh, moving. We're, our bodies, we are designed to move and actually and we, we don't do it. We don't do it anymore. No. We have effectively designed um, being active out of, out of our uh, environment. Um, so what we try to do is bring back that activity in the environment of students in vocational education. And why only there? Because um, they are actually the most sedentary group in uh, society. They're even uh, du during their holidays. They're even more sedentary than seniors, citizens like 65 plus or even 75 plus. So they don't move at all. They don't move at all. Nothing. No. Well. <laughs> so how are you? How, are you how, going how, to, how yeah. do we do that? Yeah. Well, we've got several. Um, uh, we, we use uh, several uh, games to uh, to do that. Um, for example, for in the breaks, we have uh, interactive benches. They like to hang around during the break on benches. So why not make them interactive? Uh, so we've put benches on coils and, um, uh, and an interactive lantern um, and a vibrating motor in the, uh, in the benches. So what they can do is um, uh, store some vibration in the bench. So uh, they move on the bench and the sensor detects that. And when the next person comes to the bench, they, uh, the, the, the motor releases its uh, uh, vibration and it actually has a vibration bomb. That, that, that's one of the things. The other, the, <laughs> so what happens then? What, so what happens? you jump up? Exactly. And <laughs> they, they jump up and, and, and they start to explore uh, the bench. <laughs> and uh, curiosity is a very good trigger to, uh, to get people engaged in, in such uh, kind of activity. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, that's the mechanism that we use to uh, to get them engaged in an active uh, game. Yeah, but but doesn't it work only once? Because once you you've discovered what happens, you think, well, is that all? Is, is that, that all? all? I'm exactly. Sit down. Well, that's yeah. indeed one of the challenges that we have to overcome. Uh, it's, it's not just uh, it doesn't work only once. Um, we've uh, done some pilot studies, and um, there we hardly found a decline of use. But after uh, um, uh, recently we did done a, um, a longer study, and we found that after about three weeks, you find a gradual decline uh, of, of usage, and you find also a specific uh, group of users that remain using it because they become a fan of the of the game. Um, so yeah, that puts the question. Uh, but on the other hand, um, what it proves to us is that we find um, we have a successful platform in which we can. Uh, activate and engage them. So, uh, on the other hand, if we uh, we think that if we provide new content, new types of interactions to the benches, or maybe a new device in the periphery of the benches with which you can interact, or um, maybe they, a thing with which they can collect points or uh, rewards exactly, or things exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah. We're we're also thinking of a, a uh, an overall game that actually can um, help you to choose your activity or choose your game to play. So, um, because we have the interactive uh, benches, but we also have a mobile math lesson, for example, um, it works this way. Um, you have a, a, a small avatar on your mobile phone uh, with which you have to collect uh, numbers in the right order to um, make a, an equation uh, right. Mm -hmm. But the avatar isn't controlled by your fingers or by touch, it's uh, controlled by GPS. So actually you have to play it in the schoolyard or on a, uh, on a parking lot or wherever. Uh -huh. um, it so sounds like fun, but does the, does the math teacher approve of it? Or is <laughs> math teachers are very enthusiastic. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah really, really. They, are, uh, um, they, they actually can't wait because it's something innovative and it's something uh, uh, that the children can play independent. So the, the uh, children that need extra training or the children that are uh, more advanced, they can serve them with uh, individual uh, math exercises. Mm -hmm. But we're also thinking of making it the multiplayer game. 
So you can actually uh, have a, a multiplayer interaction, social interaction and negotiations about how to solve the math puzzle, which adds something to the educational experience as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are lots of ideas and you, in your, your working and building these things. Yeah. Who pays for this? Um, that's a, a foundation, the Innovation Alliance in the Netherlands. And they, um, they've uh, made it a four-year project. And as, uh, we're, we're near the end of the project. So we're currently um, uh, well finishing the deliverables, wrapping up the concepts, thinking also about business models, but also thinking of what should we do or what can we do with these uh, 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 concepts. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're on the lookout for uh, for partners that actually want to pursue maybe one of these these projects with us and uh, um, yeah, actually make it uh, happen in in schools. Yeah. So exciting times you've been quite safe for the past uh, four years and yep, now yep. now you have to go out in the real wor world again yeah has, has the world changed since you started with this um in a sense yeah um because four years ago uh inactivity and obesity for example was quite a hot topic and um, the novelty of the topic has worn off a little mm -hmm. um so it's yeah, yeah we know the problems with being inactive and, and stuff like that so what what are structural solutions uh, that actually work? So we know, and, and um, in that sense, it's become harder uh, for us to become uh, to be uh, uh, distinguished mm -hmm. uh, from other because there's so many projects uh, now. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's one of the obstacles I think we have to overcome to remain to keep our um, advantage. Advantage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does it? Um, is, it, is, it, is it only become harder or are there things that have become easier in the past few years? When, um, you look at, when you look back and you look now and you think, oh, well. It, it, it has become easier um, in the sense that uh, schools have opened up a bit more. Um, especially when you, well, we, we've, we've um, uh, got, got projects for during the breaks, but we also have projects. So, for example, the math class for in, in class. <laughs> And um, we feel that teachers are, are gradually becoming more open to innovations and um, uh, external factors that actually disrupt their uh, lessons. Because, uh, well, not to be uh, too harsh, but, but uh, the educational world seems quite conventional in the sense that there are many initiatives, so they, they try to stick together and, and, and stick to what they have, mm -hmm. knows what works. Uh, until there's something pops up that uh, is proven to work, and and, and, um, and I think that that attitude has become a bit has softened a bit in the, in yeah. the last two, four years. So does it mean you don't have to prove anymore that it does work? You still have to prove it, but now you have more easily access to collaboration partners to uh, explore what works and what doesn't work, and uh, what is needed to make it work. Uh, uh. Do you see any other big trends in, in the serious uh, game world? Um, yeah, um, especially in, uh, in the Games for Health conference is one, is one of the uh, uh, one of those initiatives that that is uh, um, uh, significant for a new trend is that the medical world is opening up um, and and one of the next things we're going to do at Fantas is a project with the um, uh, let me see the. <laughs> The mental health care, okay. um, and and I think that's a big breakthrough because uh, yeah, the, the medical world has been very close and uh, because of the need for evidence-based uh, studies and because of the ethical issues associated with it. And uh, one of the good things is that there's more nuance there to what is possible and what isn't with within the boundaries of being ethical and and. Uh, evidence-based uh, research mm -hmm. um, and now that, that games are uh, also important for the medical world um, you see that they come to schools to start to explore and research uh, what the next innovations can be uh -huh. yeah so, so it's quite exciting times it is yeah definitely uh, and, yeah, uh, it's great to be and, and uh, yeah and especially because you see all these worlds come together come together uh, yeah. and, and uh, currently revolve around gaming and uh, um, and that makes the gaming world so interesting. It's uh, right in the middle of society at the moment. So, uh, yeah. where will it go? Where will uh, in in like five or ten years time? 
where will what go the, well, the, the, the medical the, world or the yeah, gaming world the, or well the gaming world especially <laughs> and, and, and and how it's how it's how it's used <clears throat> and how it's used yeah well uh, for for one thing technology will become more and more embedded and uh, we will be more and more uh, used to um, uh, an, an ever available level of convenience facilitated by uh, by technology um, one of the big things we have to still have to uh, become um, uh, agree upon is um, how we deal with with privacy and how mm -hmm. we will trust each other in this new society because yeah. technology uh, being more embedded means that we don't we're not faced with all the clutter of um, uh, computers lying everywhere uh, but it also means that a lot of data and a lot of processing about us is, is, is in the open or yeah. is, a mo uh, is out of our field of, of awareness. Um, so th this, this, this debate is, is, is coming to a climax, I think, with the current uh, developments in uh, big data on the one hand, where transparency is one of the biggest uh, um, uh, not benefits. Um, uh, well, advantages, uh, uh, and on the other hand, the um, national security services that try to keep everything closed and still have want to have the benefits of uh, uh, large amounts of data. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and who are we going to trust with that, and who are we not? That, that, that's one of the biggest things to uh, we, we face. Uh, we face, yeah. 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 Um, after these two days, when are you? Uh, when will you be uh, a happy man? What 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 needs to happen here? What needs to happen here? For, for me, it's the first uh, uh, gaming uh, conference, ga uh, Games for Health conference, yeah. uh, serious gaming conference, if you like. Uh, I've been a UX researcher for uh, for the uh, past ten years, um, so for me, it's it's a great conference. If I learn to know this community better and and uh, um, yeah, see what what their uh, biggest drives and uh, concerns are. And and it, and you you feel it's possible. You, you feel it's, it's definitely possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody is around, and they're very open and constructive. Uh, it's a very po positive atmosphere here. So uh, yeah, it's definitely going to work. Okay. Thank you very much. Glad to be here.